the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Please be seated. God bless you. It's good to have everyone around. Um, this does not always happen, but let me teach you something. Never frown at moments like this, where God just decides to move in the midst of his people and where you have the opportunity to soak in the glory. It, it will not happen for every service, but if and when it happens, do not fight it. There is something God is doing. It's good to be excellent. It's good to display a high level of leadership but you must have the flexibility that when he comes and in whatever manner he comes you must be able to receive him when we become excessively rigid over the activity of the holy spirit many times we lose out you see the way the holy spirit works just play strings for me thank you the way the holy spirit works is that when he comes into a place just help those under the anointing it is the honor that you give him through your patience through your discernment through the manifestation of faith that makes for the continuation of what he is doing just because he has come does not mean he will bless you where your resistance stops him is where he will honorably stop is why many people never dive into the deeper dimensions of the things of the spirit because sometimes we are too calculated this is the principle that many knew in the bible and even in modern history there were times they would just come and soak in that glory and not even know the name of what they are doing but when he's done you will find out that the infirmities are no longer there you will find out that the limitations are no longer there can i tell you this when you spend one hour of quality time in his presence it can give you 10 years of another man's desire his presence has value always are we together so don't you think this is just some pentecostal thing or charismatic thing not at all this is the spirit of god responding to the hunger responding to the desire responding to the passion of god's people in every assembly in every ministry in every gathering like this there will always be people who are not serious with god there will always be people who do not think god is a big deal but i can assure you there are always people who come before him with passion and hunger as though they never have learned anything about the things of the spirit it is for such people for their sake god will not leave himself without a witness are we together it is impossible to take god seriously and these kinds of moments will not happen in your church in your life in your family there will always be moments where you have prolonged times of fellowship and worship like this do not fight it even if you do not understand what god is doing trust him sometimes we need to manage our minds and not let it interrupt what god is doing in our lives if you want to walk with god just based on what you understand your pace will be too slow there are many times god will walk with you is three years later that you will understand what he did three years before it's an act of faith to trust him and go all the way and let your mind catch up sometimes we become too scientific and philosophical 
in our walk with God. We want to understand the details of what God is doing. Except that sometimes his ways are past finding out. You can stretch your intelligence and yet not understand what God is doing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I welcome everyone in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. And um, I particularly want to appreciate and honor all those who have traveled from outside of this nation. Um, I do this not for the ritual, but just because sometimes um, my, my heart really goes out to the many people who travel from all across the globe, not for a special convention, for the services every week. And um, it takes a lot to travel from across Africa, from across the globe. People come, churches send their delegates, their pastors. We have people come from everywhere. It is impossible for you to just decide that you will get up and leave your nation and come to another place when you can pick up your phone and follow. You see that? It means that there is something there for you that God is sending you to receive. Is that true? And so I sincerely want to appreciate them. I may not have the time, a miracle service is next week and usually would take that time to honor them, but just just to aside from um dear men of god that i would, I would appreciate shortly i want to appreciate if you are here uh, whether here or in the overflow and you came from outside nigeria please stand just for us to honor you please stand wherever you are let's celebrate them let's celebrate them inside all of the overflows outside god bless you and those who are connecting from outside of this place we love you we sincerely appreciate you in the name of jesus christ where are the delegates from canada are they here the pastor who came with delegates from canada please find out let me know let me be sure that um okay they are yet to arrive okay that's fine praise god i know a pastor and i mean some delegates a number of them all the way from canada you know ju they just indicated that they were on their way coming just to come and fellowship and to contact this grace you see when when god begins to honor and help you like this two things very quickly one beware of pride there is absolutely nothing in us outside of the mercy and the help of god and then number two you must be able to take the love and the commitment of god's people as a trust that you must not betray you must make sure they do not spend so much resources time energy and then come to your assembly and then you waste their time and share the grace it is very unfair in fact it is evil it is my covenant with god that no one no one would ever come for any service regardless what service and then go back the same now so thank you so much for making the time to come may the lord bless you i pray that your coming will be most profitable for you you have our blessings and you have our prayers in jesus name amen and amen let me honor and celebrate please be seated thank you let me honor and celebrate two great um men of god in our midst one is a dear friend and brother reverend dr paul Mbwagbo, all the way from cameroon thank you thank you so much i love you sir it was his church and uh, that hosted me in cameroon last year it was such a phenomenal time thank you thank you so much and then we have another great wonderful man of god all the way from Cote d'Ivoire, reverend ralph wafo thank you thank you so much the lord bless you sir in the name of jesus christ and for every minister of the gospel here doesn't matter whether you're in the main auditorium or outside the lord bless you we honor you in jesus name amen and amen father give me an encounter tonight in the name of jesus please lift your voice and pray give me an encounter even by your spirit give me an encounter by your spirit that will change my life forever In Jesus' name, I pray. Hallelujah.
commanding the supernatural part two we are wrapping up a series that we started last week on the supernatural helping believers to understand the necessity for walking in the supernatural and the demands what it takes to command the supernatural part one we looked at the dynamics of faith as the first key to releasing the supernatural and then for tonight part two we're going to be looking at engaging the anointing please pay attention let your spirit be open i'll be teaching us on the dynamics of the anointing so we agreed last week that when it has to do with commanding the supernatural it is an interplay between faith and the anointing that there is a role that faith has to play as far as commanding the supernatural is concerned and there is a role that the anointing has to play um, for a very long time in the body of christ it seems as though there's been a great divide and even confusion as to how these spiritual forces operate in producing miracles and the manifestation of the supernatural on one hand we have people who are in quote faith people and there is nothing else they are interested in all they know is just faith the moment faith is in place everything is in place then we have especially the charismatics who believe that it is about the anointing it has nothing to do with faith once the power of god is not present doesn't matter what you are speaking doesn't matter what you are saying and for a long time there has been arguments and even misunderstandings across this divide i think i've said it here and i will repeat it again that the dynamics of faith and even engaging the anointing all of these forces were supposed to work together to produce the supernatural there is nowhere in the bible where you are given the liberty to choose whether you want faith or you want the anointing it's like choosing whether you want fuel or you want tires in your car which one do you think is important as far as movement is concerned if you have healthy tires that are alive and you do not have fuel the car will not move but then if you have fuel full tank your gas is your your your, your tank is full and your car does not have tires it will not move also so you can see that they are very very important and my assignment tonight as we wrap up this series is to open up our eyes to understand the how to engage the anointing many believers continue to live defeated lives because they do not understand how faith works we looked at that please do well to get the teachings and then now we are looking at the dynamics or engaging the anointing last week we laid a very important foundation that i want us to not forget how that in this kingdom every time we talk about the supernatural and we talk about results you must understand the motivation behind our desire for results please look up it is very important that we put this in place and in perspective when dealing with subjects of the supernatural why do we need results in our lives why do we need to see the manifest power of god in our lives i told us that results are also evangelists that there is a kind of evangelism only results can do is that true there is a sermon that our territory is waiting for and the preacher is not a human vessel the preacher is the testimony the results the workings of the power of god that we are not the only ones who are preaching that our results can also preach is that true and when we do not produce results we stop our territories from hearing the message that can save them results are very important john 15 and verse 8 jesus himself was teaching and he said hearing is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall you be 
my disciples when you read verse 16 of the same scripture 16 he said you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain it is important for believers to command results it is important that our our christian adventures produce fruits and results that compel all and sundry to know that number one jesus is alive and number two that he is dependable i would always say this especially during the miracle services that um every time you receive a miracle you receive a testimony from god you must understand that every testimony comes with a letter from god to you three things captured in that letter number one the message of love in every manifestation of the supernatural jesus through it is saying i love you i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness number two in every miracle and every manifestation of the supernatural please pay attention jesus is saying through it that i am dependable god is dependable that means you can know you are safe trusting him and then number three when miracles and supernatural occurrences happen written in that letter is i am almighty you have to discern the supernatural every time you receive a testimony every time things begin to work for you don't just enjoy the miracles don't just enjoy the manifestations you must discern what god through those things is saying to you number one the message of love number two a charge that god can be trusted and then number three that he is almighty reminding you again that he is not just mighty he is all mighty we looked at the dynamics of faith exploring how faith works i told us that the according to scripture the equation is that it comes by grace and then it is true faith and we got to examine faith that bible faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word we did say that bible faith is predicated upon two foundations number one the integrity of god that god is dependable number two the ability of god please do not forget this if it is bible faith you want to manifest it is predicated upon two factors one the integrity of god that god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent are we together and then that number two god has all power once have i spoken twice have you heard that all power belongs to god not god and satan not god and men it is exclusively that of god that every time men seem to walk in dominion that their dominion in this kingdom is shared dominion not absolute dominion we were made partakers it's not a life that we have on our own are we together and then we discussed a few things that would help us walk in faith so now we'll discuss the anointing i have by the privilege of god's grace i've had the honor of studying and teaching the subject of the power of god and the anointing for many years and you would think that after teaching this for so many years i would have exhausted everything to be known about the anointing and that is not true one of the ways you know that something comes from god is that 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 uh, that inability to exhaust the riches in it that is in god will also follow his thoughts and whatever it is that is of god you can never truly exhaust everything about the anointing about faith it is layer after layer when you are done with one layer god will honor you by unveiling another layer of that spiritual reality we need the anointing especially the times that we live in psalm 92 and verse 10 
psalm 92 and verse 10 let's begin our teaching now please pay attention and then like we are already experiencing please be sensitive because every time you teach on the anointing the spirit of the living god has the assignment to bring confirmation to the things that are being taught so it is not unusual i know you know that by now when there are manifestations of the spirit while the word is coming you just focus on the word and make sure that you have understanding 92 verse 10 can we read together one to read but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and i shall be anointed with fresh oil i shall be anointed with fresh oil the bible tells us to look up to jesus so theologically speaking jesus is our pattern man he represents perfect theology that means jesus was approved of god to be the reference every believer who wants to attain unto stature and growth in the spirit the bible mandates that you look primarily you look unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith you understudy his life and the way that he lived and you can glean wisdom and follow that spiritual pathway to a life of excellence and a life of glory the bible talks about jesus who although was the word he came as the word incarnate through the womb of a young virgin called mary and the bible lets us know that at age 12 jesus was about the temple learning he said shouldn't you know that i should be about my father's business are we together by the time he's 30 we see jesus coming to jordan to be baptized of john who was a prophet we call him the baptist john baptizes jesus and he comes out of the water and the bible says the heavens were opened and he saw the holy spirit descending on jesus in the similitude of a dove and a voice spoke from heaven and said this is my beloved son are we bible students in whom i am well pleased he said hear ye him and then as we'll be reading later on the bible says the spirit of god immediately drove him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil he was there fasting and praying 40 days and 40 nights and having you know triumph over the temptations of satan the bible records that he returned in the power of the spirit and there began the ministry of signs and wonders the ministry of the supernatural that would not end culminated even in his resurrection and his exaltation at the right hand of the father so he became for us a template and a pattern man to study the dynamics of walking in the anointing what is the anointing we talk a lot about the anointing preachers want to be anointed business people want to be anointed career people want to be anointed there is such an obsession for the anointing and there's nothing wrong with that we need to be anointed it is my considered opinion that the anointing oil serves more for impartation than even cooking in africa i think so i may be wrong but i think so that chances are excellent that if you see someone buying an anointing oil it, it hardly will be for the kitchen that's to tell you how much we believe in the anointing it's not mockery are you getting what i'm saying now i'm just showing you how determined we are to make sure the anointing is within our reach but it seems as though regardless all the oil that we have in our bottles and the ones we have through different mediums and right now sadly in africa we've invented a lot of things largely extra biblical um, strategies to bring the anointing but it is it's a sincere desire from for, for for God's people from God's people to bring the anointing within their reach somehow we have read through scripture and we have seen through the lives of a few people who seem to have been marvelously anointed by God we have seen the possibilities that have come from their lives be it in ministry be it in business when you see a man of God who is doing something very extraordinary and very supernatural 
you most likely will say that man is heavily anointed you may not say that man is full of faith subconsciously we have connected the anointing to supernatural extraordinary manifestations is that true yeah manifestations like healings deliverances you know impartations of the spirit supernatural prosperity influence anything that moves above and beyond the scope of science and may not seem to to go through the normal law of process or the course of nature usually it attracts us and we credit that manifestation to the presence of the anointing what then is the anointing the anointing um the, the the whole essence please look up i've taught it here and let me just repeat it for the sake of this series the idea of being anointed from ancient times the context is to be smeared with oil but but the the idea of being anointed is to legitimize an operation so when we say an individual is anointed what we mean is that you have been authorized to be anointed means to be authorized to do whatever you are doing to be anointed means to be empowered to do whatever it is you are doing are we together to anoint means to legitimize an operation so that both the earth and the realm of the spirit no longer considers you to do it illegally so when the bible talks about being anointed it is an ordination that really is the essence of ordination to legitimize an operation are we together now so um, in its purest form the anointing has nothing to do with oil you see most times and, and now sadly when believers don't have the requisite spiritual knowledge and we get them into all these rituals of oil and the rest it turns into it almost becomes witchcraft sometimes all of those mediums only find their credence if and when the believer has an understanding of what he is doing to be anointed has nothing to do with oil necessarily to be anointed has nothing to do with a handkerchief a mantle some medium i'm not saying those things are wrong but the essence of being anointed is to empower you to do or to become and then to legitimize your operation are we together what is the anointing the anointing is god's ability please write it down you have to know the owner of that ability it matters to know that the ability belongs to god the anointing is not just ability the anointing is god's ability because there are many other kinds of abilities routed through there are there are abilities that seem to come from demons and come from wherever but god's ability at work in a human or material vessel please write it down the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or material vessel To accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results i'll take it again the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results so the ability belongs to god even whilst we take advantage of that ability god's ability at work in a human vessel or any material vessel and then the intent the goal of that anointing is to empower and to help that individual to accomplish god's purposes and then to produce extraordinary results a very fair definition of the anointing subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom why do we need the anointing number one the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom 
So the first assignment of the anointing is to provide empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the advancement of the kingdom. Is Satan fighting your destiny and my destiny? Absolutely. How long? For as long as you will be alive. Are we together? Psalm 66 and verse 3 it has become an anthem in this ministry. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways? It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Is God's servant Bishop David Oedipo who would say that the only language Satan understands is the language of power and he's right satan does not understand english does not understand french satan does not understand negotiation the only thing he understands is power ask egypt um, israel in egypt nine plagues and satan through pharaoh would not let them go but one last plague and it compelled him to let them go so the anointing addresses satan now it's very very important for you to understand this you see satan is spirit satan is not flesh it is not only god who is spirit alone satan is also spirit do you know what that means you cannot arrest him number two you can't take him to a court number three the military cannot help you fight him number four you cannot set him on fire all the things you do to men to find peace you cannot do with him satan is spirit the angels the fallen angels and all the demons and the cohorts of hell they are spirits even though their damage is not spiritual alone their damage starts from the realm of the spirit but it has a physical expression in your life when the devil plants sickness in your body it can start from a dream but it will not end at a dream it will manifest physically and you will see the injury you will see the pain when satan programs disfavor upon a believer it can start from the realm of the spirit but you will shockingly see it manifest physically are we together so it takes the anointing to be able to subdue the forces of darkness let me tell you this do you know every time you stand before god's people please look up to make an altar call i want you to know that we are not the only ones who are seeing you angels are witnesses to that salvation that prayer demons are also witnesses from the day you declare the lordship of jesus christ an intentional line has been drawn between you and satan for the rest of your life whether you are alive except you die but provided you are alive satan is interested in you apostle who did i offend that's not the issue when you were saying jesus i love you you are a potential threat to the kingdom of darkness satan does not give you a chance to grow before he attacks you he knows what the life of god is and he knows what you received even though you don't know it you may you may trivialize what you received but satan understands the implication of being saved in fact satan does not even wait for you to be saved the moment you are born if you just if you are born and you appear just with a spirit he won't really bother you because you don't have the legitimate ground to function on the earth but the moment you manifest with this material body you are already a potential threat that's why you read in the bible satan killed children he didn't even give them a chance to grow are we learning why do we need the anointing so that we can have that empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom it was jesus that was speaking and he said right from the days of john the baptist he says the kingdom suffered violence and he said the violent will take it by force are we together the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness it is true when you leave satan unhindered he will kill everything he can kill he will steal everything he can steal he will destroy everything he can destroy john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy 
Satan's tripartite signature. The moment if you are unsure who is around, verify it with these tripartite activities. If Satan comes, he will never leave you the way he met you. He must steal something. If Satan comes and passes you and you are alone, except God helped you or intercession saved you or it's not him. But if it is Satan, you know, there are people called pick. There are these boys that are experts in stealing. They can lift their hands and still steal. <laughs> Praise God. They can pass you with their hands lifted and yet something will still be missing. And it's not diabolism. How they... And, Praise the name of the Lord. So Satan is like that. He can pass through your finances. He can pass through your marriage. He can pass through the life of your children. He can pass through your spiritual life. He can pass through your destiny. He can pass through a church. He can pass through a ministry. He can pass through the life of a man of God. You know it is him because something must be stolen. Something must seem to die something must seem to be destroyed someone shout no way shout it again say no way because for some of you before now you've not seen the necessity for the anointing and satan keeps camping you around that mindset and say are you an apostle no are you a prophet no are you not just a businessman don't mind them he's cheating you let me just advise you right now especially because of these end times the condition for being anointed is that you are alive the moment you are alive just know that satan will come to you if he has not come the messengers are on their way but through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves let me prophesy to someone that any force that has refused to let you go in the name of jesus and by the power that raised christ from the dead he must give up on you finally please sit down hear me your business will not just grow uh -uh. your children will not just be responsible people the ministry will not just grow your political career will not just flourish there is a devil who is determined to make sure everything god in your life dies are we together it will tear your relationship between you and your wife tear your relationship between you and your children destroy your finances until he reduces you to ashes mess up your ministry until you become a testimony of pain and shame satan for you when he does it he will sign it like julius berger will build and write signed everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen what makes you believe satan will fold his arms and watch you promoted you think he does not know what your influence will do to the kingdom man of god what makes you believe that satan will sit down and allow you to continue to be a rising voice you think he does not know what your voice will do to your territory mm. oh zechariah and elizabeth it's not about barrenness it's about john who will anoint jesus there are many battles today that many of you are fighting that has nothing to do with you it is because of something that will come out from you listen when you see satan fighting your family what is what is finance does he eat naira and cobble and dollars he knows that with that empowerment you will send your son to a mission school and in that mission school one day a prophet or apostle will visit that school he will have an encounter and he will find his purpose and become a mighty man of God so he will make sure that school fees never enters your hand help that woman please I can tell you firsthand every time you see the devil around your life he's not there to advise you he's not there to counsel you he's there to steal to kill and to destroy 
Help that lady, please. Listen. Can I be honest with you? I have seen many demon spirits in my life. I'm not telling you what I just read in scripture. If you ever see men excelling in spite of Satan, something is keeping him. You don't want... Listen to me. For thousands of years of Satan as a defeated foe, he has still not given up on fighting God. You have to understand the person you are dealing with. You will think after the millions of years of his rebellion, he should just give up one day. Satan is as determined today as he was when he left heaven. What kind of a creature is that? Even some of the capons, some of the arm robbers, some of the terrorists, they got to a point where they were broken like children. Have you ever seen Satan repenting? Have you ever seen his picture on his knees saying, God, just punish me, but I'm ready for peace. Most people do not know the person they are dealing with. If you think oppressing you for 30 years will make Satan say it's enough, think again. Apostle, he has tied down my ministry for five years. One day go better. Satan, go and read your Bible. A man who was thrown from heaven and after millions of years, he is still determined to thwart the purposes of God. Is there is anything to learn from Satan is determination. Can I tell you? You were born in the middle of an old story that has nothing to do with you. But simply because you found yourself in that space called the earth, you better find out the rules of engagement. Otherwise, you will find out that your life will become a casualty that you know nothing about. I remember years ago, a gentleman, true story, the moment he became 13, someone slapped him in his dream. 13 years and when he came and met me and he was talking you know a little boy was in one of the schools then in zaria and all of that and he came those times i used to just see them and he was telling me that somebody slapped him do you know true story when he was talking to his father the father said describe who slapped you and that was exactly what happened to the father i don't know if it was around that time but at least as a teenager you know what the spirit was saying welcome to a battle that your being part of this bloodline has forced you. You must be interested in what we are dealing with. Are we together? Why do we need the anointing? Because there is a real devil. There are real spirits. Mother, the devil will not fold his arms and watch your five ten eight children rise up to become responsible people no his joy is to steal to kill and to destroy you would think if you start crying once satan will pity you find out who he is there are people crying in hell if he's to pity anybody who will start with them not you i don't know about you but for me i've made up my mind as a covenant with god I have no negotiation with Satan. There are no discussions. Every time me and he meet, he already knows. I'm saying this because some of you have allowed the devil lie to you. You are a woman. Don't get into these spiritual things. Some of you, you are a man. Some of you, you are not a prayer warrior. You don't let the devil keep deceiving you and destroy your life. Let me tell you this. See when satan wants to destroy a family his first target is the strongest person spiritually i'm giving you spiritual intelligence he is not stupid he will afflict with sickness he will afflict with pain he will afflict with frustration so that when you go down spiritually that hindrance has cleared the way he will now settle down and attack someone blasts in the spirit in one minute not my destiny in the name of jesus help those under the anointing
in Jesus name please sit down let me tell you something please listen to me listen to me listen to me I will not go ahead of myself there is a separate series on deliverance that one will announce it and I will settle down and teach you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 